So I did promise I would show you something from my uh, casting tape from last year. And what I have here that's been sitting around uh, collecting dust at my cabin is a fish basket that I made. Uh, it's a pretty small fish basket. Um, my stream is pretty small. And right here in this pool is where the largest of the fish are. And they're maybe five inches maximum, four inches. Uh, there's a handful of small ones, another uh, pool down the way, there's some. So I'm going to go ahead and put this fish basket in there. Now, you can't see the fish right now. They are underneath that rock right there. They go underneath that ledge. I'll try and get some footage, uh, separate footage, where you can see the fish. They'll be swimming around this pool, but as soon as I come within 5 to 10 feet of the creek, they are under that rock. So I'm going to put this up underneath that rock. I'm going to see if I can get any fish in there. I'm pretty confident. So what I'm going to do in the meanwhile is I'm going to put this in there and then I'm going to go start a fire and get that cooking down, get a bed of coals going uh, because I plan on eating something before I leave today. Put it right up there. Perfect. Great thing about fish baskets, don't need any bait or anything. Those fish love hiding in the shelters. They may even get scared in there when I come back to check on it. Um, find their way in, can't find their way out. So there it is. Let's catch some fish. So I'm about to start the fire for uh, cooking the fish that we are definitely going to catch in the uh, fish basket. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to show a different fire starting technique. Now, when we talk about uh, survival and bushcraft as a hobby, usually everyone thinks of primitive and they think of uh, bow drills and uh, you know, the friction fire methods and ferro rods, things like that. And that's great. Everyone should know how to make a friction fire, ferro rod, uh, fire roll, things like that. You should know how to do that. However, in true survival situations, you need to use whatever you have on hand that's the most efficient and works and can get you out of a pickle. I'm going to show you a technique that I have used in the past. Um, it wasn't in a survival situation. It was, uh, I was out cutting firewood in Alaska when I lived in Alaska and a friend of mine killed a ptarmigan with a stick and we decided to cook and eat the ptarmigan while we were getting firewood. And uh, it turns out that neither one of us had any means of starting a fire on us, but we did have two chainsaws. So I had my chainsaw out earlier while well, sitting out still from cutting the tree that was uh, threatening my cabin. So while I've got the chainsaw out, I'm gonna show you this technique. Now I will warn you, you should not try this at home. Um, you should be a trained expert or a complete idiot and since I am both that means I'm doubly qualified to do this but it is dangerous so I got my chainsaw and uh, I've got my spark plug wrench always have that with your chainsaw for tightening the chain and uh, you know checking the spark plug or what have you so I've already taken the spark plug out um, I've unscrewed it I have it back into the socket and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of gasoline out. Now, if you have some means of collecting the gas into some kind of a container, a rag, uh, some curved leaves, anything where you can collect some gas, it may take you a couple tries. So you want to have a reserve of gas and you don't have to keep trying to wet it out. Uh, if you don't have anything, you can wet a leaf. You can actually dip the spark plug in, try and get enough uh, fuel on there. But what I'm going to do is this air cleaner cover has got a great bowl shape to it. So, yeah, well, it's under pressure, so I just got sprayed with gasoline, so hopefully I won't go up in flames. But I'm going to pour some of that gasoline out. Get a little reserve going here. And uh, try not to spill too much gasoline all over your chainsaw, or it may go up in flames. 
This particular chainsaw is a piece of garbage and I don't like it. So it wouldn't really hurt my feelings all that bad, but I don't want to deal with burning plastic and all that stuff. Otherwise, I don't really care. Um, so I've got some gasoline here. I'm going to wet the spark plug. Try not to pour it all over the chainsaw because then it definitely will go up in flames. I will use right handy here is a rhododendron leaf, which is curved, makes a great scoop. And uh, I want to get enough, just enough gasoline on the spark plug that you got some excess there. And then I want to have some on this leaf. Now I'm gonna try, spark on. It's making contact. Nope, need a little more. And I've got fire. Oh, so you know it went out already. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gas and just pour it on here and do the cheaters method. Make sure you're not pouring gas onto something that's hot. Again, I'm a trained idiot, so watch out. Now I've got a fire. I have the uh, extra gas from here. There you go. So, survival situation. I've got a chainsaw, no fire starter. I can spend all day trying to make a friction fire. Or if you're in East Tennessee and everything is sopping wet and the humidity is like a thousand percent, I could spend the next month trying to make a friction fire or I can use my chainsaw gasoline and do that. And that's what I'm going to do in a true survival situation. Use the tools on hand. So I'm going to get this fire going and let it burn down to a good bed of coals. We'll go check on that fish trap and uh, let's get something in our tummies. I'm going to check the fish basket. I'm confident we're going to have something. It feels weighty. Feels like there's something in it. Oh yeah. Big old catch right there, buddy. Heck yeah. We're eating good today. If you're wondering why I did the stupid bit about pulling uh, bacon out of my fish trap, it's really a couple of reasons. For one, even if I did get any fish out of my basket there, I'm not going to eat them. Um, this is my stream to take care of. There's no need for me to take the fish out of here. There's not that many. They're small. Um, I did end up catching a big crawdad unexpectedly um, out of the fish trap but um, I wasn't gonna eat him either I like them in the stream they're really good the stream is really clean uh, it's got a good ecosystem we got lots of uh, lots of little critters in there so I'm not gonna hurt them um, part of it though is just kind of poking fun at myself uh, when I was on alone they showed on TV when I was fishing um, I was saying that I really wished I could catch a cheeseburger out of the lake. The funny thing is, is I don't even remember saying that until I saw that. Uh, it's not something that you think about. And I certainly didn't think it was something that they were going to put on TV. So I was kind of making fun of myself there. I pulled bacon out this time. So uh, that's just as good as a cheeseburger. Um, but one of the other things it brings me to... Is thinking about the availability of food, of wildlife. Um, and I think sometimes people who don't have a lot of experience getting way out into the wilderness overestimate the abundance of food. Um, if you are in a suburban environment, like my house where I live, uh, kind of on the outskirts of the suburbs, 
and um, you know you head out one direction it really gets kind of rural from there but um, the town that I'm in is 29,000 people and I am backed up to a large green belt that's something like 70, 80 acre green belt. I'm at the end of a cul-de-sac on a road, but I'm still in a suburban environment. And in that environment, I have rabbits all over. I mean, anybody that uh, follows my Facebook or Instagram, you'll see pictures of, I've got foxes, I've got rabbits. Um, big old rat snakes uh, going after the chipmunks. I've got squirrels all over. Deer constantly in the yard. Um, raccoons, you know, trying to get in the trash cans. Things like that. So, when you look at nature from that lens, you tend to think that there's, uh, you know, this huge abundance of food. And you forget that we draw animals in when you're in a suburban environment because we have a concentration of food. We have all of these ornamental plants in our gardens and all these things that bring the deer in and the rabbits in. And when you have the rabbits in there, then you have the foxes. And we have great environments for squirrels and chipmunks. And that brings in the foxes again and uh, rat snakes and things like that. We've got garbage that brings in coyote and, and raccoon and stuff like that. I'm only an hour and a half away right here. And um, the trees are different, the environment's different, I'm a, a little bit of a higher elevation. But the funny thing is, is out here where it's much more remote, it's not really remote, but much more rural, there's far less animals. There's no squirrels around here. You'll hear a raven or two, but there's no hundreds of songbirds. I don't see squirrels running around. Um, I'll come across a snake now and again out here. Um, I've got game cameras up all over the property here. And occasionally I'll see a deer. Occasionally I'll see a hog. Except for when I'm putting bait out. When I'm putting deer corn out and uh, hog bait out and trying to bait them in. You'll see them come in. Then you'll see possum and raccoon come into the bait. But on a general basis with all my cameras up here... You don't see that much. So, it's a different world out there, away from stocked lakes that people are used to fishing. Suburban environment where there's animals all over and you think that, um, you know, hey, there's a squirrel. Squirrels all over. You know, I don't kill any of the animals in my backyard um, where I live. That's kind of our little sanctuary. We like watching the animals. I don't hunt them there, I'm not gonna kill them there. But I mean, I could go out and in an afternoon, I could kill 10 squirrels, a couple of rabbits, uh, you know, anything like that easily, anytime I want to. Um, come out here, totally different. You go out into a remote environment, it's totally different. So that's something to keep in mind for people that really uh, maybe don't have a ton of experience getting far out there. Um, there are certainly places, um, that have an abundance of wildlife that is remote but it varies you'll see that from season six and seven of alone and they're on the great slave lake and they've got all kinds of fish coming in and of course they were allowed to use gill nets and they tend to have somewhat deeper water some of the participants um get on chilco lake and you know there's a reason why sport fishermen aren't out there in the time of year that we were put out there fish aren't biting there's not that much going on right there but as in two months prior, we would have been fishing uh, or catching fish like crazy. So it's one of those things to think about. You don't just pull food out of nature. It's not everywhere like that. So something to think about. Anyways, I'm going to get on with cooking. This uh, fire is a little cold for my bacon, so I'm going to get this going.
So if you've made it all the way to this point in the video, thank you for sticking it out. But you have to admit, any video that ends in eating bacon, it's a good video. You can't deny it. So now that I have learned the techniques of clickbait, of lying to your viewers, I'm going to do the next thing and say, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like, put a comment down there. Just let me know you're interested in seeing what's going on in the future. Um, right now, I'm still kind of segueing from alone into this uh, other realm of, of showing you bushcraft things and um, adventures and, and things like that. I'm going to be building things. I've got hunting trips. I've got fishing trips. I've got all that stuff that I normally do. I'm just going to film it, take you guys along. So I appreciate you sticking with me. And um, if you have any suggestions, if you have anything you want to see, put it in the comments. Let me know. I'll check out all the comments and, and see what you want to see. And we'll go from there. Thanks. Mm-hmm.